All right, so in the first instance, when I saw the this question, I was kind of like confused. All right, but I tried to like decipher it though. So they said that with good structural representation, indicates the source of atoms that are present in adenine and uracil. So first of all, I must actually say this question is a very crazy question. And almost everybody that wrote this exam will feel this question. You get it? So you see, this is actually adenine and uracil. So they are now trying to tell you that what each of the atoms in adenine and uracil have a source. And that's what they will never ever teach you in a medical school unless you have been reading wide. Okay. So let's get to look at the sources. So we'll talk about adenine. Basically, the nitrogens at atoms that are found in adenine, their sources. We'll talk about the carbon, uh, carbon atoms found in adenine, their sources. They will go to uracil. We we'll talk about all the nitrogen atoms found in uracil, their sources, right? They also talk about what the carbon atoms found in uracil, their sources. That's how to answer the question, all right? But this kind of thing like this, who, who we actually even know this kind of thing? It's impossible. So we are saying this, the atoms in the structure of adenine and uracil, they come from different precursor. So different things actually what? Give the atoms, okay? And they come from these different precursors during their biosynthesis pathways, okay? So let's explore the sources. First, we are talking about adenine. Everybody watching this video should know how to draw adenine because they said that what? With structural representation. So you must draw adenine and uracil before you start talking about it. Okay, so adenine is actually a purine base. Its atoms come from a variety of source during purine biosynthesis pathway. Okay, so for the nitrogen atoms, the first nitrogen is derived from one aspartate. Okay, is which one is the first one? I think it's the first one, right? Okay, first one is from aspartate. The third and the ninth are derived from glutamine. So draw it and be following me up. The seventh is derived from glycine. Okay. They're looking at the carbon atoms. The second carbon atom is from what? From it, right? Which is actually one, one carbon unit from the folate pathway. Um, the carbon four, carbon five, and what? Nitrogen seven are derived from glycine. You can see that nitrogen seven is derived from glycine, okay? You, you barely find any of these bases in a biochemistry textbook. That's why I was just saying this question was uncalled for, all right? Then carbon six is derived from or bicarbonate. Carbon eight is derived from formate, which is also from the folate pathway. All right. So that's it for adenine. Let's move to uracil. This is uracil. Another image of uracil or this one. Anyone? All right. I always tell people that almost every biochemistry structure have like two ways of drawing it. Okay. So there's no point trying to know all the ways. Just find one of the ways and work with it. So for uracil, we say that uracil is a pyrimidine base. Its atoms are derived from different precursor molecules during the pyrimidine biosynthesis. Um, first nitrogen is derived from aspartate. Third nitrogen is derived from glutamine. For the carbon atoms, second carbon is derived from bicarbonate. Fourth, fifth, and sixth carbon is derived from aspartate. Okay. So having answered this question, I'll say that the person who said this question was actually wicked. All right, because no student will know this. No student will know this is actually what PhD in biochemistry stuff. You get. So those are the sources of atoms that are present in adenine and uracil. All 